As one of Billboard magazine's hot country producers for 2010, Michael Knox is certainly living up to expectations. He is now one of the most in-demand producers in town, with current charting singles from Trace Atkins, Montgomery Gentry, and Jason Aldean. He's even nominated for his first CMA award this week for his work on Jason's fourth disc, My Kind of Party. Kelly Lynn caught up with Michael to talk about his work on the other side of the studio. All right, we sit down and we talk to the artists, we talk to the writers, and today we've got a special treat. We're talking to one of Nashville's biggest country music producers. How are you, Mr. Michael Knox? Doing great. Now, for our viewers, Michael is Jason Alding's producer. Actually worked with Jason from the very beginning, found him down in Georgia. Yeah, we, um, I was going down to see my grandmother. It was about 99, 1999, and um, he was playing at the buckboard down in um, Georgia, which was a big club back then, which had acts like Travis Tritt and Trisha Yearwood and all them playing out of there, and Mark Wills. So um, I went down there to see a talent show, and he was um, one of the guys playing there. He, was, he went on like 18th yeah. out, of, out of 20 acts. It was a two-day show. And did you go looking for a star? Yeah, I, I, I tried to find a talent show during the trip, so when I go see my grandmother, I could write the trip off. <laughs> exactly. And um, I was working at Warner Chapel at the time. so. Um, I went down there and saw uh, two nights of talent shows, and it was great. He was, he, like I said, he went on about midnight, you know, 18th. Wow. So it was cool. And you he went up cowboy, to him. He had his cowboy hat on, his earrings, and they were rocking, you know. What did you say? Do you, when you were working at Warner Chapel, what were you doing? Um, I was vice president at Warner Chapel at the time, and um, I just went up to him and said, "Man, I love what you're doing." And um, I don't think he knew what Warner Chapel was, so um, uh, we just started a relationship from there. And over the next six months. We just started kind of checking each other out, and I brought him to town, and we recorded here in this studio with something real quick to see if we liked each other, and it went great. And you're still using this studio. Yeah, yeah. And pretty much the same kind of um, engineers and everybody, so it's great. How does that song process work when you're out listening? I mean, do you get bombarded? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, we go in um, next week. We start cutting the fifth record, and we're going to cut it all at the same time. So. Um, I'm real popular when Jason goes in the studio. Everybody so we, loves you. We have meetings all, all, all month. We're having them almost every day with somebody. We, I'll go through about 5,000 songs. Wow. And um, my job is to, you know, make sure the, the 30 or 35 that I play Jason are the right ones for him to pick the record from. And, he, and he'll come up with a few songs, too, that he gets from people. And we just kind of come in here and pick the best ones and cut them. Yeah, there's a great picture here that you guys looked yeah. like children. I mean, we how old were you when you, well, you started, what, in the industry right after high school? Did you go to college or? Yeah, I went to college, graduated from MTSU, um, played ball at Aquinas and went up to UT to play ball and then graduated from, you know, MTSU back in the day. But um, all that picture was uh, 12 years ago, so I'm, I was about 30. 32 years old back then. So when you were growing up, did you say, I want to go be a hit producer on Music Row? Was that a dream of yours, no, or what did you set out to do? I, I wanted to be an artist like everybody. I just forgot you had to learn how to sing and, and do all the other stuff. So I couldn't sing, I couldn't do any of that. So in college, I bought a bunch of recording gear and started like recording my neighbors and my musician buddies and um, got kicked out of probably two or three apartments. and. I uh, got kicked out of a lot of um, dorms and stuff, recording music and getting in trouble. But, you know, then I found out that I love being on that side than trying to be an artist. And it was more fun finding somebody and that could do it better than me and, and achieving more than what you could do. To run a record label. Yeah, run a record label is, is definitely, it's always been on my list. and. I'm trying to do the right things to get me to that point where somebody will look at you for that. You know, you're managing, you're, I, I was vice president at Warner Chapel, you know, I signed Gretchen Wilson, John Rich, um, Jason, you know, um, you know, signed a bunch of writers, helped them get cuts and, you know, so you're trying to build that resume where people understand that you're an artist developer, you can find songs, you can put albums together, you know, so the next thing is, is that they go, hey, we want this guy to develop our acts because, you know, I'm, I want them to look at me more as a, more of a you know more of a, a developer than a producer. You know, it's you know uh, I love producing, I love doing that, but um, I like putting things together more. I like putting teams together. Would well, be a real lucky label if they got you to head it up. I'd say you're probably overqualified. No, I mean, no. look what you've already done. So no, no, no. you're my PR person. <laughs> 
everybody's always trying to reach for that next thing. Well, thank you so much for yeah. talking to us. We're all going to keep our fingers crossed, and um, we'll look and see you on TV at the CMA Awards, and hopefully you'll have your speech prepared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be, it'll be quick. They'll give me 30 seconds, and then Jason will take, you know, 20 of it. <laughs> So. And we'll also be ready to hear this new album. And yeah. congratulations on everything you're doing. Awesome. Michael Knox on Inside Music Row. Michael will spend the rest of the year back in the studio with Jason Aldean, so we look forward to hearing what they come up with next. We still have tons more music up ahead. We'll visit next with a few artists from down under as they take the stage right here in Nashville. Come on back for more Inside Music Row.